over the next couple of weeks, we are going to be talking about uh, medical terminology and human anatomy. I teach them together. These are chapters uh, one through four. Um, chapters one through four in the manual, in the book. But I'd like to tell you that this information is not featured very prominently on the exam. But it is important for you to know and to understand and to get as comfortable as possible using medical terminology and understanding anatomical parts. Because this is what's going to give you more respect and more money uh, in the operating theater. Okay. So doctors, nurses, and other licensed healthcare professionals are expected to be able to communicate on a specific level. Medical terminology is a separate language. Medical terminology is a very compact, meaning it's dense, whereas one word uh, can mean a lot. So it's a, it's a compact and a dense language. So whereas other times you may have to use a sentence or two to describe um, what you're trying to say, in medical terminology, uh, it may take one or two words. And that's why this language is used. It is a professional language. It's born out of Greek and Roman languages with a little German and French and English sprinkled in there. Okay. It is made up of roots, prefixes, and suffixes. And when they're put together in a specific order, you have a word. Now, the word that I'd like to demonstrate straight out with is the, is a word that everyone knows but no one truly understands and here is the word that I use and mind you once again I, I want to caution you this is not going to be on the exam except a few medical terms which I will point out to you that may appear on the exam the last next couple of weeks are for your personal enrichment okay and you can watch these videos again and again and again uh, until you uh, until you figure things out uh, and become really comfortable plus I'll be uploading all sorts of audio files for you that you can download and have on your devices which will help you um, uh, learn more and more ter terms in in the language of medicine having said that uh, I don't necessarily want you to sit there and spend time listening to this information because a I'm not going to give you a quiz B if you're going to devote your time to that you will have to spend a an entire semester taking notes and still not remember a whole heck of a lot the way to truly study medical terminology is to learn a handful of prefixes handful of suffixes and you know a few roots and then be able to mix and match them together so it makes some sense to you and I'll show it to you by demonstrating it on the word diagnosis diagnosis is my favorite word to introduce people to medical terminology everyone has seen the word diagnosis there is no one out there who hasn't seen it heard it or used it in the sentence okay you go to a doctor you're not feeling well and you're gonna say so doctor what's my diagnosis okay I think everyone can do that but what is the meaning of the word diagnosis and how did this word come up it's certainly not an English word okay so what exactly is diagnosis well interesting that the word diagnosis is made up of three word parts prefix dia root gn and suffix osis okay so this is what we have here each one of these word parts actually means something now have it would be very easy for me to tell you the meanings of these uh, different word parts but as you know me 
I like to kind of ask questions, bob and weave, and tell stories in between. So it kind of settles in your mind a little bit. So let's look. What words do we know in the English language that you use a lot that start with the prefix dia? Well, how about this nice word? Diarrhea. Or how about this nice word? Diagram. I'm sure you've heard of it. So we got dia, dia uh, here. So these words are somehow related to the word diagnosis. So the question is, what exactly is diarrhea? What exactly is a diagram? Now, when I teach this stuff here, I want you to expand your thinking just a little bit. I want you to think outside of whatever box you are in right now. Maybe you're not in a box, you know, but I want you to come out of your educational shell and explore a few other options. And at the same time, learn how to properly learn and retain information, okay? So notice that I constantly use the board behind me. No matter what I do, I do not use PowerPoint presentations, which would be very easy for me to throw in there and just you know, run a PowerPoint while I'm doing a little talking and that would be the class. But no, I do it in such a way that we put things on the board. And as you notice, I draw pictures, which is what I call upon you to do. The best way to remember things is to draw yourself a picture. And with that picture, you can include the first letter of the word you're trying to study. So can anyone tell me what diarrhea is, by the way? What is diarrhea? Not fun. <laughs> not fun. It's true. But that's unfortunately not the meaning of the word diarrhea. So what is diarrhea in your understanding? Come on, don't be afraid to speak up. It's, it's, usually, it's usually caused by a virus. Well, not necessarily. Um, but uh, what what exactly is the it that you think is caused by a virus? Stace, did you want to say something? I was just going to say uh, diarrhea is just like when you have like an upset stomach and um, something needs to come out, basically. Well, don't don't be afraid to say it. This is medicine. <laughs> when you're contaminated, if your food is contaminated. Okay, so there is that. But the word is diarrhea. What does it mean? Who came up with it? You know, you know, for goodness sakes, don't be afraid to say it. How about, all right, loose stool. Okay. okay. Diarrhea, it means that, right, you put something in here that looks like food. And what comes out on the other end does not really look like the usual excrement. It's a runny, ugly, usually foul-smelling mess that comes out. Runny stew, the squirts, the runs, the shits. All those wonderful terms are used to describe diarrhea. But what does diarrhea really mean? And what about a diagram? What is a diagram? How are these words related to each other? So you see what I'm saying? We're opening up our thinking. We're opening up our thinking to try to understand how the language uh, is related. Okay. Now, I, I may have shown you uh, that you may have seen when I described the word epidemic, pandemic. Okay. And um, uh, uh, endemic. Okay, I, I showed you that prefix pan meant the world, pandemic, okay, uh, epidemic, uh, epi means above, so it's outside, and, and demo, uh, demic means belonging to the people, you know, so, so pandemic is people around the world, epidemic outside of the group of people, endemic is within a certain group of people. So by changing prefixes, we change the meaning of the word a little bit. So over here, we got diarrhea, diagram diagnosis okay so we can see that these words are somewhat related so what does dia mean dia is a prefix and by the way 
the word prefix actually has a meaning. Prefix is made up of two word parts, pre and fix. Pre means before and fix means to attach. So the actual literal meaning of the word prefix means attach before. Before what? Before the root, before the word. And the word suffix, well, suff means the end and fix means to attach. So suffix means attach in the end, in the end of the word. So we got prefixes and we got suffixes. And now you know what I mean. Okay, so prefix dia. And look at the way I'm writing it down. Dia with a dash to the right of it means that means that this is a prefix. It goes before the word. Prefix dia means complete. It also means, oops, it also means thorough. And it also means through. These are three different meanings of prefix dia. Now, in this particular case, in the word diarrhea, we also have a suffix. And the suffix over here is rhea. This is a very important suffix. Okay, so make sure to please write it down. Suffix rhea means flow. We see suffix rhea in a few interesting places. Look at this word over here. Gonorrhea. Meno, Rhea, Rhino, Rhea. So, even if you don't know these words over here, you know by looking at this now that suffix Rhea means flow. These words over here all have something to do with some kind of a flow. Who's ever heard of the gonorrhea? I'm not asking if anybody have it, so don't tell me, okay? Has anyone ever heard of gonorrhea? Can anyone tell me what gonorrhea is? It's a sexually transmitted disease. Yes, it is a sexually transmitted disease. Sometimes they call it the clap, okay? Now, does anybody know what it looks like and how it feels? heard it's green well it's basically a pus discharge of pus from a, a person's genitals okay so there's an infection that resides inside a sexual tract why do they call it gonorrhea well because the word gano in greek literally means please forgive me to fuck that's, that's what it means. There is no better way to translate it. It's not copulate. It's not sexual congress. It literally means fuck. So if you add this to this, you have a definition of the word, which literally means, forgive me, fuck flow. Okay? Are you catching my drift? By the way, Answer this question for me. Have you ever heard of the word gonads? Anyone? Anyone ever heard of gonads? What was it? Balls. Balls. But that's not necessarily the case. It's anyone's sexual organs. Okay? Gonads. Okay, fine. Balls. 
what do men need balls for? Reproduction. Thank you. But if you look over here, Gano and Gano, there you go. You see? You see that? Gonads is not necessarily a bad word. It is actually interesting. Uh, ladies, anyone ever been pregnant in this room? Yes. Do you know the blood test that was used to determine that you were actually pregnant? No. No. Well, let me tell you. The blood test that women go for is called an HCG. Yeah. HCG. HCG, sometimes also known as beta sub blood test. Okay? But it doesn't matter. But what does HCG stand for? HCG stands for human chorionic gonadotropin. Gonadotropin. They're testing you for a sexual hormone known as gonadotropin. Gonado. Gano. You see, even if you don't know a word in medical terminology, but you can spot a small part of it, you will be able to find a right answer somewhere. I once had to take a medical terminology test. See, back when I was a young girl, man. <laughs> All right, when I was a young man and I had to get a job in the hospital, one of the things that they made you do is today they don't do that anymore, but they used to make you take a medical terminology test. And I remember I sat down to take a medical terminology test. And, you know, the person came out and says, wow, Steve, the computer says that, you know, in the excess of 5,000 words or something like that. Me, who, me? I don't know 5,000 words as well. The computer don't lie. Okay. You have a tremendous knowledge of medical terminology. I didn't. I knew a few prefixes, I knew a few roots, and I knew a few suffixes. And based on this information, I was able to provide an intelligent guess on the answer that was provided in a multiple choice computer test setting. That's what I'm showing you how to do right now. That's what we're doing right now. Watch this video a few times. Watch it again and again and again, please. As we're learning medical terminology, and I'm going to be teaching you medical terminology and human anatomy together, because without human anatomy, medical terminology is useless. And it's also useless if you can't think outside the box. So for the next couple of weeks, by the way, I want to tell you, those of you who are uh, panicking, oh my gosh, I didn't get a lot of work done, I need to catch up, now would be a good time to catch up because for the next couple of weeks, guess what? No quizzes. Just you and me talking medical terminology and you taking notes, drawing pictures, and trying to understand what's inside your body, what's it called, and why is that important to you? A, because you will sound and look like a professional, number one. Number two, you will know the names of surgical instruments. They will make a lot more sense to you because a lot of surgical instruments are called after the anatomy that they work, that they interact with. So please, you know, this is of a direct benefit for you. And, uh, you know, and it's fun. I think it's an eye opener. So we understand gonorrhea. Let's look at the word menorrhea. We know that rhea is flow. Now, what does the meno sound like to you? Just open your minds. And what does meno sound to you? Menopause. What the, well, what's menopause? You're, you're on the right track. What does it sound like? What is menopause? When the uh, female start having his monstrous, uh, um, peri her period. When it stops. Yeah. When it's, that, okay, so menopause. So meno must mean menstruation. Yeah. So menorrhea, what does it actually mean? Ladies, it's a fancy word for having your period. Okay? Menorrhea. But, so, meno, menstrual, flow. But yeah. if I were to add a prefix, dis, D-Y-S, 
menorrhea. I would have a word dysmenorrhea. Prefix dis means difficult and painful. So dysmenorrhea literally means difficult or painful menstrual flow. Now, what about rhinorrhea? Rhinorrhea. We already know that suffix rhea means flow. What is a rhino? Well, a rhino is an elephant, is an animal in the zoo. Kind of looks like this, has a problem with the nose, has a big old horn on the nose, right? Head west on Washington Street toward Pacific Yes? Street. Yes. Yes. So, prefix rhino literally means nose. Rhinorrhea means nose flow. Folks, rhinorrhea is a fancy medical word that means runny nose. Runny nose. Runny nose. Okay? Look at how many different words you just learned, you were just exposed to. How many of these words you will be able to recall later? A few. In the right time, you will be able to see them, spot them. The purpose of these classes is to get you to think logically, calmly, especially if you get a complicated, big medical term like endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography. Endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography. It's, uh, it's one of my favorite uh, medical terms to throw out there. Uh, why? Because it's long, because it's hard to pronounce, and yet it comes out pretty smoothly out of my mouth. Am I that smart? No. Just ask my wife. She'll tell you that I'm an idiot. Okay? But I am an idiot who wanted to sound smart. So I sat there and I broke these words down. I sat in front of a mirror and I looked at myself while trying to pronounce these words like endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography. Jesus. No. <laughs> Definitely not Jesus. Okay? But it is endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography. Okay? Like calling an ear, nose, and throat doctor, okay, as an otorhinolaryngologist. 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 Geobacillus thermophilus. Okay, there's all sorts of big words out there okay and the the good thing about big words is that they can be broken down into a bunch of small words which will make sense okay and you can break them down and say them bit by bit by bit and then put them back together and then say them together okay that is the point of all of this and this is what's going to separate you from the rest of the people on this planet who have nothing to do with neither healthcare nor sterile processing. That is why it is imperative that you become a professional. Becoming a professional in this field starts with a certain mindset up here that, yeah, I am going to learn everything about this profession. I'm going to learn the language of medicine and I'm going to look and sound just like people who earn a lot of money. And at some point in time soon, I'm going to earn a lot of money. I'm going to be a member of that club. I'm going to be, I'm going to be a member of this exclusive, exclusive club. Folks, this is your ticket into this exclusive club of people that do good work, hopefully. Okay. And that earn a lot of money. Now is your opportunity. This is your chance. Don't let it slip through your fingers. And don't dismiss how powerful the title CRCST next to your name is going to be. It's a big title. It's a big title. It's like RN. You know, RN used to be a nothing. A nurse in the hospital used to be a nothing. You had nuns and prostitutes who worked in that field. Okay, that's these are the people who were nurses at the turn of the 20th century. And, uh, you know, at some point in time, you know, when medicine became a bit more sophisticated, people realized, holy moly, most of medical care is being handled by these people. And they started giving them titles. First, they started registering them, and then they started requiring them to go to school, 
and to get certified and take an exam. Well, that's what you're doing right now. You are in school to get these credentials. Once you get that credentials, that makes you a bona fide professional. The more letters you have next to your name, the more, more dollar signs you get to deposit in your bank account. I'm sorry to keep coming back to how much money you're gonna be making, but it's important because that's what keeps us motivated as human beings, to get paid, it's an exchange. What was it? I really wanna take the test. Okay, good. Let's talk about it at the end of the class. So, this is the purpose of these uh, lectures. But let's get back to the word diagnosis, even though we took a small detour into learning about prefix dia. There is the definition of dia, complete, thorough, and through. Okay, so now you know that diarrhea means complete or thorough flow. That's the definition of, of the word diarrhea. Now, let's look at the word, um, what, what other word that I just have? In a, check this out. I have this word here, diagram. Well, we already know dia. The question is, what is a gram? Telegram, radiogram, cardiogram. What else did I say? Radiogram. What are all these words? Interesting, interesting. Well, I'm going to show you what gram is in the form of a picture. Here's a picture for you. Where have you seen this little picture before? Uh, let me uh, draw a be better picture. Can you see the picture that I'm drawing? I'm going to put it up over here. Where have you seen this picture? I know darn well that you have seen this picture. Now, where did you see it? No, huh? Well, I'm sure you have your phone somewhere nearby. I'd like you to take a look at your phone. Okay, I'd like you to take a look on your phone on the number one key on your telephone. Okay, what do you see under the number one on your phone? What do you get when you press and hold the number one key on your phone? Voicemail. Voicemail. And if you look under the number one thing, you see this sign right over there. Now, this sign represents an old tape recorder. Tape recorders. Remember tape recorders? Yes. Have you seen the tape recorder? It's like a little cassette. You throw it into this little player and it starts to play music. Yes. And it rotates tape from one side to the other. That's what it is. So the word gram means recording. And it also means picture recording or picture. So can anyone tell me what a diagram is? How do I translate the word diagram knowing what you know? Dia and gram. So what is the definition of the word diagram? Come on, add these things together, add them together. Anybody wants to take a stab at the uh, translation of the word diagram? Oh, come on. Nobody wants to chime in? A thorough picture. Or a complete picture. Very good. So if somebody says, hey, Steve, give me a diagram of your house. Okay, well, that's my kitchen over here. Uh, over here, I have the staircase. Here, I have the door. Here I have the dining room, here I have the living room, and I have two bedrooms over here, and these are my windows. Here's a diagram of my house. Okay, there it is, a complete or thorough picture of what my house looks like. 
that's kind of a stupid design. That's not what my house looks like. But you get the picture, don't you? Now, what exactly is a telegram? Well, we know that I can subdivide the word telegram into tele and gram. Tele and gram. Where have you seen prefix tele? What words do you know in English language that you use all the time? Telephone. Telephone. You know, Alexander Graham Bell and some other people out there invented a telephone and they called it telephone. Why the hell did they call it a telephone? Why couldn't they call it a talkie? But they call it a telephone. Any other words that you use every day? You don't always you don't use telephone alone every day. What else do you use every day? That starts with tele. Oh, come on. Television. No. Thank you. Television. Television. Holy moly. Tele, tele, tele. And how about this? You know, you can also see a telescope. Oh. So, prefix tele means far. Tele means far. Phone means sound. When you're talking to somebody on the phone, you actually hear sound from afar. That's why a telephone is called a telephone. And now, television. Tele means far. Vision is seeing. You are seeing from afar. I could be on the moon and send images of my vision down to Earth. That's television. Telescope. Far. And the word scope means to see. To see far. That's why people who are looking at stars are using a telescope so they can see far okay so telegram is a recording from afar right we don't really use telegrams anymore but before they used to you know use this you know morse code somebody would have to sit there transcribe what they said with these uh, dots and dashes and so on and so forth write it down on a piece of paper and run it over to a person saying, quick, there's an emergency message for you from New York. You have to do this, this, and that. Telegram. Cardiogram. Cardio, as we will learn later, means heart. Gram is a recording. So a cardiogram is one thing that we are accustomed to seeing. It's these squiggly lines. Oh, I misspelled the word radiogram. But it doesn't really matter. You get the you get the picture, no pun intended. So you just learn what a gram is, diagram, telegram. Look at all these look at all these terms we're learning as we go along. There is not a test about this. The only thing I want you to do is watch this video over and over again so you begin to understand how to study what we're going to study. Okay? We're studying medical terminology. Today is your introduction to it. And guess what? We're still trying to figure out what the word diagnosis is. Okay? So, we just learned a prefix, dia. What is dia? Again, dia means complete, thorough, and through. Now, the next word part is GN. Now, you know that I'm not just going to sit here and tell you what GN actually means. Okay? But I'd like to write down a few words on the board that you all know. How about this one?
How about this one? How about this one? How about this one? Look at all these words that have a root GN inside. Have you heard of these words? Benign, malignant, agnostic. Oh, agnostic, yeah. yes. What's an agnostic? What does it mean? Uh, Who's an agnostic, rather? An agnostic is somebody that don't believe in God. Very good. Agnostic is someone who doesn't believe in God. But you've heard of the word recognize. Yes. I'm sure some of you have heard the word benign and malignant. If you haven't, if you haven't, I assure you, you heard of it. You may not have made a connection. Lucky for you. But let's look at the word recognize, shall we? And then we'll get back to these other words here. Let's look at the word recognize. There is a root GN. And look at this word right over here. Prefix re root cogn or cogno okay with a slash and an o in the end and suffix i z e So what is prefix re? You all know this prefix. If you're watching a sports game, they use the prefix re all the time. They say replay. What does replay mean? And they now have the instant replay. What is replay? What is replay when you're watching sports? If you're watching sports, maybe you're watching something else and they still show you a replay. What is a replay? Showing us again. Showing us again. Again and again and again. So prefix re literally means again. Replay, redo, reconstruct, reimagine, redevelop. Do you see? It's a prefix re that we add to any existing word like play. Play plus play plus prefix re means play again. Rebuild is build, but again. Am I making sense? Yes. Very good. Now the question is, what is cogno? But in reality, what is GN? You know, you may have heard people use, oh, this uh, Steve there, he's, uh, he's not bright. I think he has some kind of a cognitive disorder, cognitive disorder. What the heck is a cognitive disorder? If somebody was, was to say that to you about somebody else, brain. What would you, brain. So I'm not gonna torture you too much. And I'm just gonna say that GN, GN means to, no or knowledge and together are the same thing gn and kn mean the same thing they mean knowledge or brain or mind okay now suffix ize is a very important suffix when you see a suffix I-Z-E on the end of the word, you know that that word is doing something. Okay, literally. You can have a word like human. And if you add suffix I-Z-E, the word would be humanize. You can be a customer or a patron of a store, okay? The word patron means a customer to some extent. But if you add suffix I-Z-E to the word patron, the word would be patronize, meaning to actually go to the store and shop there, patronize. Uh, there's other meanings to the word patronize. 
uh, you can exert yourself if you add exert and I-Z-E, change the word a little bit, you'll get the word exercise, I-Z-E on the end. Humanize, fantasy plus suffix I-Z-E would be fantasize. So suffix I-Z-E literally means doing, making, doing. So suffix I-Z-E means doing. Or we can say process of doing. So let's look at the word recognize with a new set of eyes because we all learn language recognize. Oh, I recognize this word. I've seen it before. So prefix me, prefix re means again, cogno means to know, and I-Z-E means to do. So the word recognize means to know, process of knowing again. I meet you once, and then next time I see you, it says, hey, I know you. That's what the word recognize means. Can you dig it? Can you dig it? You see what I'm talking about? Do you understand the process of deciphering this language or any other language do you understand what i'm saying or am i speaking some foreign language that no one understands do you get it it's like latin well because it came from latin but not everybody learns latin nowadays it used to be required but it's not anymore it's partly greek and it's partly latin you're absolutely right so what do we have here so we just learned the other part of the word diagnosis. Dia, we already know. GN, we just learned, means knowledge or to know. And now for the pièce de résistance, the suffix osis, which if you don't remember anything from me today, I want you to remember suffix osis because in all of medical terminology, suffix osis is probably one of the 10 most important suffixes that you will ever have to learn. So please make sure to remember suffix osis. Okay, now let me throw on the board a word that you probably heard. If you're living in the United States, if you own a television set or you listen to the radio, you have heard ads for medications that offer treatment for this disease. This disease is called osteoporosis. Osteoporosis. Has anyone ever heard of this disease Osteoporosis. Osteoporosis. It's what? I just sat up straight. It's a back, it's a bone disease. Ah, it's, it's a bone disease. Okay. I like it. I like it. I like it. But you know what? Let's break this word apart and I'm going to draw you some pictures. Okay. And please draw them with me. This word is broken down into several word parts, osteo, pore, and osis. Now, osteo, very important root for sterile processing technicians, where we're going to be learning medical, uh, where we're going to be talking about medical instruments, surgical instruments, you will come across at least one, and this one is called an osteotome. And guess what? Osteotome is an interesting is an interesting medical uh, instrument I'll put it over here osteotome I'll get back to the word osteotome later osteo here is a picture to help you remember what osteo means what is this a picture of my dear friends
Well? A dog bone. It's bone. It's just a bone. I know it looks like a doggy bone. I know, I know. But it is a bone. Therefore, the word osteo means bone. So the word osteoporosis is related to a bone. If you knew nothing else about this word, you know that it belongs to the bone. Poor. Here's a picture that I'm going to draw for you for the word poor. What did I just draw for you? Use your imagination. What does it look cheese? like? Cheese. What kind of cheese? Cheddar. No, this is definitely not cheddar. I can I'm definitely not speaking to a cheese person then. Blue Anybody else? Cheese. Nah, not quite blue oh. cheese. It doesn't have such big holes in there. Which cheese oh, has I big holes? I never. Yes. I missed what just happened. I got disconnected. Okay, that's all right. So You're back. So what kind of a cheese is this? Swiss cheese. Swiss that's cheese right. has holes. Holes. And and Swiss these cheese. holes are known as pores. You know, like pores in your skin through which you sweat. So pore means holes. Pores or Holes. Now, suffix osis, which is also going to finish our definition of the word diagnosis, because I'm still teaching you that first word, diagnosis. Imagine that. I've been talking for over 50 minutes, and we're still only now coming to define the word diagnosis. So, osis. And what did I tell you? Osis is one of 10 most important medical terms, suffixes that you will have to learn, period. So if you learn nothing today, please learn osis. And now, osis, definition of osis. Let me say it first, then I'll write it down. Osis means abnormal condition of. Suffix osis means Abnormal condition of. Abnormal condition of. And now, now you should be able to translate the word diagnosis. All you got to do is put these definitions not all of them, maybe some of them, maybe one of them, together and tell me the meaning of the word diagnosis. Does anyone want to take a stab at it and tell me the meaning of the word diagnosis? Anyone? Come on now. Diagnosis? Yes. Um, it's when you go to the doctor. Nope. No, 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 no. No, 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 let me stop you. All I want you to do is look on the board and assemble the true meaning of the word diagnosis based only, only on the words I have written down on this board right now. Um, I know it's, yeah. It's the roof. The doctor is acknowledging is that it, there is uh, a... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Not the doctor's acknowledging. I have all these words here. Don't create anything new. Just use... Knowledge of an abnormal condition. Who said it? Me, Kayla. 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 Our, they, uh, <laughs> Kayla, if I could give you some kind of a present through the computer, I would do it now. Please repeat for all of us once again the actual definition of the word diagnosis based on this stuff right over here. A complete knowledge of an abnormal condition. That's right. A complete or thorough, you could say, a complete or thorough knowledge of the abnormal condition. And yes, when you go see a doctor, that doctor is going to ask you questions. They're going to touch and feel and see where it maybe smell, I don't know, do some lab tests. And based on that information, they are going to give you a complete or thorough knowledge or understanding of your abnormal condition. That, 
my dear friends, is the definition of one word. So this one word diagnosis is one full sentence, if not a paragraph of information, a complete or thorough knowledge of an abnormal condition. Good job, Kayla. Yeah. And this, my Thank dear you. friends, this, my dear friends, is exactly how you need to look at medical terminology by breaking things down. Now, I wrote down one other word, osteotome, osteotome, osteotome. I have a what question. A, yes, shoot. Um, what about like hypnosis? It's it's a, it's um, it's an interesting it's an interesting uh, so obviously it's an abnormal condition of some kind of a state. The question is hypno. What does that mean? You know what? I never bothered to look it up. Okay, but you know what? We'll look it up. But let's look at the word osteotome. So let's uh, let's look. Let's look. We'll we'll look for hypnosis. So osteotome. Osteo. Tom, and suffix e. Well, osteo. We already know what that is, right? We know that osteo is bone. Tom and e. We don't know. E is a suffix. Okay. When you have a suffix E on the end of the word, it always, always means I, I was, uh, okay. instrument or device. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up? Okay. Now, the word Tom is an important word to know. Tom is an interesting word. It appears in such words yeah, that you know, like Adam, or the word anatomy, something that we're going to be learning. Question. Well, I, I think we can just leave it. I mean, I can right after this class, down, I'm, I'm our next sure. class, we'll, we'll start to learn human anatomy. Now, what the hell is anatomy? What uh, is an atom? Yeah, yeah, I think so. But look, atom is made up of two word parts. It has a prefix a yeah. and a root tom. Now, what does a as a prefix mean? Very important prefix. It's one of 10 most important prefixes <laughs> that you will have to learn. And you'll see why in a second. Prefix A, there is an interesting word, moral. A moral person. And if I were to change the word moral and add a prefix A to it, the word would be amoral. So what's the difference between moral and amoral? A moral person is a person who has morals. The word moral uh, literally means a person who knows the difference between wrong and right. Moral or morality is a, is a biblical term, which means knowledge of wrong versus right. That's what it means. That's what we have. And so when I add a prefix A in front of the word moral, what does that new word mean? What is amoral? Come on. You know what moral is. What about amoral? Well, it's a person who doesn't have any morals. So prefix A, prefix A literally means without. Okay. Now, what is an atom? Does anybody know what an atom is? You studied science in school at some point in time. What is an atom? Does anybody remember? Come on. Come on. Give it to me. Yes, it's no, yes, chemistry. no. Well, it is chemistry. It's also physics. It's, it's, it's uh, everything. The like world is ma made up of atoms. 
an atom is the smallest unit of Basically. all matter. So all things are made out of matter, everything. And you've, you've heard of the periodic table of elements. It has these uh, names of different uh, elements that the universe is made of. It's like God's cookbook. Okay, you have all these ingredients and from all these ingredients, you make, from all these ingredients, you make the known universe. And uh, this universe is made out of atoms. Okay, so atom is the smallest unit of matter. Now, they only discovered atoms and they learned about atoms in the mid 20th century. 1940s the atom 19 late 1930s 1940s they finally broke the atom and they made uh, the release of energy and they make atomic weapons you know atom bomb you know blah 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 all that wonderful stuff that we hope germans well whatever so atom but atoms we have known about for several thousand years because some Greek philosopher, not a scientist, discovered that, you know what? The universe must be made out of small parts, like a building is made out of bricks. So is the universe made out of these things that cannot be cut any further. And he called them Adam because root Tom means cut. So the word atom literally means can not be cut or without cut, cannot be cut or subdivided any further. That's the root atom. The word atom means cannot be subdivided, cannot be cut, cannot be. Once you split the atom, it is no longer matter. It's the energy is released and it's gone. So atom is the smallest piece that makes up the universe. Now, the question is, what is anatomy? Now, anatomy is a fabulously interesting word for us. Let me divide it for you into different word pieces. It has prefix Anna. Actually, it's not a prefix. It's actually a root. Anna, Tom, and suffix Y. Ooh. It's amazing. Anna. Anna means section. Tom means cut. Now suffix Y is an amazing suffix, and I'm going to put it right next to suffix E that I told you. E on the end of the word means an instrument or a device. Suffix Y on the end of the word means Procedure. It's very important for us in sterile processing. You can have a device known as endoscope, endoscope, or a person can have a procedure known as endoscopy. All we did was change two letters. One E, we exchange it with Y, and instead of an instrument, we have a procedure. So please, E on the end of the word means device, Y on the end of the word means a procedure. Look at how we're learning the language of medicine. Just look at how we're learning it. You begin to pull on the thread. And it begins to unravel the entire universe of language. And let me show you how. So what is anatomy, by the way? Anatomy is, what's the anatomy? We're studying the structures of the body, but how did we do it? Ana, section, cut, and Y means a procedure. It's a procedure of cutting into sections. That's what anatomy is, a procedure of cutting into section. Cutting what? Well, we assume it's the human body. 
but you can apply the word anatomy to almost anything. What is the anatomy of the lemon? Well, we got the skin on the outside, we got the pulp on the inside, some pits, and some juice. And this is how it is. So we have a lemon, kind of looks like this. If I take a slice out of it, it's going to look like with some pits throughout. That is my section of the lemon, and this is the anatomy of the lemon. Do you see how that worked out? Well, this is what the people who studied anatomy used to do. They would take a saw, take a dead body, cut it up into different pieces and into sections, and that would study the anatomy this way. And, you know, recently in the Museum of Science, about a year ago, they had this whole anatomical display over there. Was it a year ago or was it before COVID? I don't remember anymore. Okay. But, you know, they had billboards out there, uh, you know, with, oh, the body un uncovered, blah, blah, blah. And they would bring all these jars filled with body parts and people would, oh, look at that. Ooh. Okay. Very nice. So, you know, where, do you know any uh, words in English language that begin with Anna? Anatomic. Well, it's true, but it's the same word as anatomy that we just covered. Okay, how about this? Analysis. Analyze. So, what is analysis? Steve, what is your analysis? of the situation. Well, let me analyze this problem, right? What is your analysis? What does it mean, analysis? What is the definition of the word analysis? And now, by the way, folks, I promise, I promise you, I will not be torturing you too much longer. I know it's a lot of information to digest. I know I'm going well out there into this universe of language and how we break things down and and, and I'm, I'm introducing these new, more complicated words for you. By the way, we were, we were talking about osteoporosis and I, I, never, I never finished its definition. Osteoporosis, osteoporosis. We said that osis was an abnormal condition of, por was this, you know, holes like Swiss cheese and osteo we meant bone. So if I take osteoporosis, I say it's an abnormal condition of having holes in bones. That, my dear friends, is the definition of osteoporosis, just so you know. Okay, people may tell you it's the degenerative disease of the, uh, of the bony structures of the musculoskeletal system, blah, 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 uh, whatever it may be. But at the end of the day, it's abnormal condition of having holes in bones. And when you have holes in bones, your bones are weak and they break or they bend. Have you ever seen these old ladies walking around hunched over like this? That's osteoporosis. Their spines bend under its own weight because the bones of the spine, which I'm going to teach you about, by the way, right? they become brittle because they have holes in them. Okay. So. Analysis. Well, we just learned that Anna is section. Now, the question is suffix lysis. Do you know any words in the English language that end with lysis? Dialysis. Ooh, dialysis. Home run on the first first outing, we get dialysis. Now, guess what? Hey, you already know the first part of the word dialysis. It's dia, like in the word diagnosis. Check it out. Yeah. Complete, thorough, or through. Complete, thorough, or 
through. Now, the question is, what is lysis? Does anyone know any other words that you may have come across uh, that, uh, that have lysis in them? Paralysis. Paralysis. Nice. How about electrolysis? Mm. Mm. All of a sudden, the word electrolysis begins to uh, strike a chord because at some point in time, somebody told you, ladies, in particular, that electrolysis may remove unwanted hair from different places. Yep. Almost, almost permanently. Now, the question is, what the hell is electrolysis? Well, we know that first part of the word electrolysis, electro, which means electricity. Now, the question is, what the hell is lysis? I'm going to tell you the definition of the word lysis. The word lysis literally means to break down. And now we have the word dialysis that we can translate. A complete or thorough breakdown. Now, does anybody know what dialysis is? Um, it's actually um, sucking your blood. Mm -hmm. No. Is um, it's when you can uh, uh, actually pee. That's right. So sure. the kidneys, the kidneys don't work anymore. God forbid. But yeah. a lot of people are sick with that. So the kidneys cannot work. They do not filter blood anymore. And I will teach you about kidneys a little bit as we study this. And they take you to this procedure where they hook you up to a machine about the size of a very small refrigerator. Okay. And that machine takes out blood from the human body, filters it, pumps the good parts of that blood back into the body and takes out the waste products from the body. And that procedure is known as dialysis. Well, dialysis translates as complete or thorough breakdown. Yes, they break down the blood into good and bad, take away the bad and put the good back inside the body. That's why they call this procedure dialysis. Electrolysis is breakdown of human hair, for example, using electricity. But it's this procedure is called electrolysis, okay? But they, there's other forms of electrolysis. It's an electrical breakdown. That's what it means. Paralysis is breakdown of muscle tissue that doesn't move anymore. Okay? So, lysis means breakdown. That's what it means. So, analysis. We were talking about the word analysis. When you're trying to do analysis, you take a big problem, you make it into sections, and you break down a big problem into smaller sections so you can solve them. That's the word analysis. Analysis, to break down into sections. That's what analysis is. So you, you, okay, let's say your child comes home and they have an F in their uh, report card uh, in, the, in their science class. And you say, okay, how, how did you get an F? Did you do your homework? Did you come to class? Section number one, did you do your homework? Did you come to class? Did you understand anything from your homework? Do you understand the teacher or did your teacher suck? So you took one problem, got an F in the science class, and now you break it down into different sections and you try to figure out why and how. That, my dear friends, is analysis. That's why it's called analysis breaking things down into sections. That's what it means over there. Now, I put the word osteotome up on the board earlier. Osteotome is an important instrument that you might actually have on your exam because it's definitely talked about in the chapter uh, when we talk about surgical instruments. Osteotome, check it out. Osteotome is osteo, tom, and suffix e. Now, can anyone tell me the meaning of the word osteotome by adding these three things together? Because we know what e is, we know what tom is, and we know what osteo is. So, osteo is bone. Tom, I'm going to draw this picture right over here. You can figure out what this picture is. And E, I'm going to draw this picture right over here.
So, what is an osteotome? Based on your notes, what is the definition of an word osteotome? Come on now. Come on now. Let me have it. An instrument or a device that cuts through the bone? Thank you. Look, I, I put a picture of an inch, wrench, so I know that E is an instrument, remember? I gave you two suffixes, E and Y. Y was a procedure, and E was an instrument. Tom, I made a picture of a knife. Maybe not a good picture, but nonetheless, it's a picture of a knife. And then you got bone. An instrument cuts bone. Osteotome. It's an instrument that cuts bone. And that, my dear friends, is how medical terminology can help you pass the board exam, okay?